You would think that a game as wholesome as Animal Crossing would have a sweet, loving, kind, and wholesome community behind it, right? Well, you're wrong. Dead wrong. The Animal Crossing community has been riddled with all sorts of drama and controversy that I think documenting it would be an incredible undertaking. But I want to call your attention to something that I truly think will go down in the history books, if they make history books about that sort of thing. Do you remember these bad boys? These gorgeous, lovely, beautiful creations were called star fragment trees, and Animal Crossing New Horizons players would use them to decorate their islands. Now would you believe me if I told you that they were contraband? Yes, these hacked trees were never intended to be in the game, and their existence caused a lot of controversy in the Animal Crossing community in 2020. So what exactly happened to the star trees? Where did they come from, and where did they go? Let's get into it. Let's take it a step back for those of us that aren't super familiar with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Star fragments are items added in New Horizons that can be obtained through wishing on shooting stars during meteor showers. The occasional NPC visitor, Celeste, will give the player DIY recipes that are craftable with the varying types of star fragments. All of the different colors of star fragments indicate a different zodiac sign, and there's also just a regular and large one too. These little guys are aesthetically based on Conpeto? Excuse my pronunciation there, which is a Japanese candy. And they also remind me of those cute little lucky stars from elementary school. It's no wonder that the players love these star fragments. They're cute, glowy, and just so exciting to stumble upon in the game. People would use them to craft celestial decor for their islands and also just drop them on the ground, give their islands sort of a pop and pizzazz. The items that use star fragment DIYs were popular amongst those attempting the fairy core aesthetic for their Animal Crossing islands. Modders in the Animal Crossing community were quick to create the infamous star fragment tree, as well as other trees with items such as acorns, pine cones, cupcakes, anything. You name it, it was probably on a tree. They did this hack by doing all sorts of techie shit that I don't know anything about to replace the typical money tree with whatever item that they wanted. They did work just like typical bell trees, however, and when you shook the trees, the item would fall, you'd pick it up, but the next day or whatever, it would not grow back. People would get real upset if you came to their island and shook their star fragment trees, which I laugh now, but at the time it was not funny. Very uncool to do that. Star fragment trees exploded in popularity in May of 2020. Players didn't need to have their own modded switch to get these star fragment trees as they could go to someone's island and dig it up or have somebody drop them off to them, which makes it a lot more accessible than a lot of other types of modding that happens in the Animal Crossing community, since you don't need to have your own special console that can do that kind of stuff. These trees started popping up on treasure islands. Treasure islands are player-made islands where players would go and collect craftables in bulk, sought after, and rare items, typically for real world money. These islands could be accessed through many different Discord servers. We've got Twitter, Instagram shops that were popping up, also um, eBay, Etsy. Some were using this as an opportunity to overcharge players that didn't have a hacked switch, didn't know anybody with a hacked switch, didn't have access to them for free. Real world trading hit this came pretty hard when it came out. But it's it's been a dying trend, thankfully. If you really want an item, your best bet is to trade for it, or you can go visit those Treasure Island live streams. They let people onto their Treasure Islands. You do get special access if you sub to them, or you can join a Discord with like an item ordering bot. Both of these methods require somebody with a modded Switch, but it's a lot more widely available than it was back in the day when the game came out. Nowadays, you don't see too many people collecting real world dollars for animal crossing items, but at this time, it was relatively mainstream. So of course, people would try to make a quick buck. Oh, and people definitely did get scammed. And of course, you could only obtain these trees if you had purchased a Nintendo Online subscription so that you could go visit people's islands, trade, all of that. And this did lead to a rift between players who had Nintendo Online and those who didn't, but We'll get to that later. Players started to go to town with these hacked item trees, decorating their islands and posting cute aesthetic photos on Twitter and Instagram. These posts were gaining popularity fast and tons of people were asking how they could get their hands on one of these amazing star fragment trees. However, 
Since these trees were considered to be a hack, or a cheat even, the Animal Crossing community was pretty divided. There are a lot of Animal Crossing purists out there, as there are for a lot of video games. Nintendo games seem to be um, especially notorious for that. I would say the large majority of people though were all for Star Fragment trees, but there were people who did vocalize their disdain for hacking in general, and so they were against them. Many people, including myself, do not consider Animal Crossing cheating, hacking, modding to be a problem since the very nature of the game itself is not competitive. I don't think there's any way that you can look at Animal Crossing as a competitive game, and cheating does not necessarily create an unfair advantage in the game because, well, it's not competitive. There is no ranking in the game outside of what Isabel judges you on, and no public leaderboard or anything. Many would disagree with the sentiment, however, which is their God-given right. And I think that it's because there's this sort of competition to decorate your island, have the best island, and post it on social media. I'm not saying everyone who plays Animal Crossing cares about that, but I think it's fair to make the observation that there is a relatively large online community that does partake in that. People who are against the aesthetic hacks such as the star trees might feel it is unfair to players who can't get to those trees. One aspect of this argument is that not everybody is able to pay for the Nintendo Online features. Nintendo Online not only gives you access to play online with others, but it also allows players to trade with one another and download custom designs from the custom design portal. Those without Nintendo Online cannot do these things. But like, Come on, if we're gonna get technical here, inserting my opinion again, I say that the argument that getting star trees is unfair because not everyone can get Nintendo online is like the same as being like, oh, well, not everybody can get custom designs, so custom designs are unfair. Not everybody can sell their turnips for the highest price on somebody else's island, that's unfair. And then I think we're just getting way too deep into it and it starts to become a ridiculous argument. I think it's just something to think about. Like I said, the anti-cheating sentiment has been around for a very long time. There are people who also believe things like time traveling to be cheating as well. And while that doesn't involve hacking or modding in any way, time traveling, if you're not familiar, is where the player changes the time of the device that they are playing on, which changes the time in Animal Crossing as well. Players choose to time travel for many reasons, such as kicking your villagers out easier, avoiding waiting overnight for buildings to be built or moved, etc, etc. However, there is a significant portion of the player base who time travels because things like work or school prevent them from playing during times of the day that say the shops are open. And so they set their clocks back a few hours just to be able to play at better times. Or maybe they're like me and just prefer to play during the sunshine. Or they hate the 2 p.m. hourly music and can't stand it and need to time travel away from that at all costs. Packs and mods have also been around in the Animal Crossing community forever. I remember being able to plop trees and weeds in the river in New Leaf. And in case you didn't remember this, there was no way to pick your skin color in past Animal Crossing games. For example, the only way to have a character with a darker skin tone in New Leaf was by tanning in the sun or using the Mi Mask. But there were mods that popped up like the New Leaf Save Editor, which allowed players to manually set their skin tone for a few days, which did not solve the problem at all, but it definitely was an option. So not all mods and hacks and exploits are terrible, game integrity soiling demon spawn. Some aim to be genuinely helpful for the player experience. For me, me personally, I don't remember there being a huge pushback on modding in the New Leaf days, but I also think maybe I just wasn't in those circles and I wasn't really seeing that on forums. So if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear in the comments, but from what I remember, it was a lot more chill. However, the fear of breaking the game or breaking your console has always run rampant. Rumors were stirring up about star trees potentially corrupting save files. There were also claims that shaking a hacked tree would produce permanently dead tiles on players' islands, which are tiles that reportedly could not be interacted with or modified in any way with no reversal. These type of rumors pop up in any game all the time ever, but this type of fear mongering I feel really runs rampant in the Animal Crossing community for some reason and unchecked. Over the years I've seen these types of posts go viral many times for past Animal Crossing games and while bad stuff does happen, 
it's not always the most accurate information that goes viral. Corrections simply just don't get as much traction or attention as the initial posts do. So the scary rumors about broken consoles and corrupted game files just kind of live on in infamy. The fear is not unfounded, however, as there have been plenty of documented instances of people's game files corrupting and players losing all of their island progress, even on the Switch and in New Horizons. My friend Wilbo did share a photo from Abdallah Smash's video where modders would put any item on a tree and trees with bigger items would actually create dead tiles when shaken. However, I don't think that there's any anecdotes of this happening with the star trees, heart trees, cupcake trees, acorn trees, yada, 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 because they are small little tiny petite items. If you're skeptical, you can always back up your save data regularly. And of course I recommend that if you're going to be modding or doing anything. My theory as someone who's never had a modded switch never modded a switch never done anything crazy techy or cool like that so take this with a grain of salt is that i think this just happens more often to modders themselves that are experimenting with all sorts of nefarious things rather than the players that were like going to pick up star trees but it does happen like one time i did pick up an internal item from a friend who was modding their switch dropped it I picked it up and then I couldn't drop it from my inventory. But at the next game patch, it went away, disappeared, poof. So it wasn't really like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I mean, I guess it would have been the worst thing in the world if I picked up like a whole inventory of those items. You know what, shit happens. So <laughs> if you're gonna get into this kind of stuff, I think you just have to understand the risks, right? Nobody's forcing you at gunpoint to get star trees. Nobody ever was doing that, so I mean, I don't know. It reminds me of the rumors back in the day in New Leaf when people would say some deranged hacker traded an item with them, and when they picked it up, it would say, this item will slowly corrupt your game file. And it's like, what does slowly corrupting your game file even mean? Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Moving on. What I'm trying to say is that this has been happening since before I even started playing Animal Crossing, which was half of my life ago. Cheating and hacking in Animal Crossing comes with its warnings, but as long as it does not harm another player's game files, it's not something that I would consider worthy of getting your panties in a bunch over. Before the Dream Suite was added to the game, the Star Fragment tree controversy kind of died down a little bit. It was very much like do whatever you want to your own game. That was kind of the sentiment, whether you liked them or not. But on July 30th of 2020, the Dream Suite was added into the game, which allowed players to upload a version of their dream for other players to come visit. Those who had Star Fragment trees and hacked items were wary of uploading their islands to the Dream Suite because the Dream Suite came with a reporting feature, of course, as it should. Players that would get their islands reported would get the islands obviously taken off of the Dream Suite. And I've also heard of people getting banned from Nintendo Online, maybe for being a repeat offender. Players who did upload their dream addresses faced mass reporting for cheating from other disgruntled players in the anti-Star Fragment community. There was also a certain kind of content that popped up at the time where content creators would go and seek out these players with star trees and report their islands. These content creators would not only encourage their communities to report the islands, but also harass them on social media. One of these creators that I will try not to name myself um, was pretty unliked by members of his own community, the Pokemon community, for basically being like a drama starter, pot stirrer, and well, his habit of trying to get people banned from doing hacks and mods and cheats in Pokemon. I actually wanted to share something, a diss track about this YouTuber that I thought was hilarious. My is so stupid, they call it for this what an era. Also, I thought that it was absolutely hilarious for this creator to take the moral high ground on something like hacking when his island flag was a lewd image of Isabel from Animal Crossing. Absolute class act. Things really blew up in the community when this same Pokemon YouTuber posted a video on July 30th, 2020, showing his subscribers how to use the report feature in the New Horizons Dream Suite that I will remind you had just been added to the game that day. In his video, he told players... Now the funniest thing about this is how mad 
people are getting when their cheated islands are being removed. You have absolutely no right to be upset, and you shouldn't be cheating in the first place. True cop behavior, folks. <laughs> Most of the video shows him using Twitter search terms to find islands using the hacked items, visiting said islands, reporting them for cheating, and encouraging his followers to do the same. This YouTuber's antics stirred up so much back and forth on Animal Crossing Twitter. Players were removing their own social media posts, photos, any mention of hacked items on their islands. People were going private, of course, to avoid the wrath of said YouTuber's community. Not only would they go and harass people on Twitter, Instagram, um, they would seek out maybe people's Etsy shops and go report and harass them on there. Truly what a fun time, right? Things were tense over the next couple days, but on August 5th, 2020, Nintendo released version 1.4.1 that effectively patched out the Star Fragment trees. All Star Fragment and other hacked item trees in the game were replaced with regular money trees. You'll be happy to know that the trees were removed and replaced safely, and as far as I can tell, did not corrupt anybody's game in the process, which um, is great. Other known hacked items, such as Harv's Fence and Bench, KK Slider's Stool, just to name a few, were actually not patched out at this time. In fact, they were not patched out until September 30th of the same year, which I thought was interesting. Some players, like my friend CEO, shook their trees right before their games were patched in order to save the Star Fragment materials. Ah, ah, I shook it. No. A lot of Animal Crossing fans online voiced their frustration and anger towards Nintendo for removing the trees, especially those who paid real world money for them. And even though that's obviously against the rules, it doesn't mean that people weren't disappointed. The blame was pointed in many directions. Many looked towards the notorious hacking police YouTuber for calling attention to the exploit, and I don't blame them. It seems to have drummed up enough controversy to get Nintendo's attention and to get a quick fix out. It obviously takes a lot of preparation to do patches like that. Now, I don't wanna give anybody too much credit, but timing is interesting. It's safe to say that many in the Animal Crossing online community were really upset to see these trees go. A petition even popped up to bring them back to the game legitimately and got as many as 3,000 signatures. I think people were mostly understanding of Nintendo's decision to patch the trees out of the game. Game developers have to keep an eye on exploits, hacks, bugs to a degree, but something that could have potentially helped the situation was to add the trees as a legitimate gameplay feature. Solutions such as being able to plant star fragments and other craftables in the ground to grow a tree themselves were presented. Nintendo is not necessarily famous for having a dialogue with their fans or caring about ideas or what they have to say, so I think it's safe to say that the suggestions fell upon deaf ears and that was never added into the game. At the time, I think plenty of people in the Animal Crossing community were frustrated and angry at the game itself, and it seemed like Nintendo was just taking away all the fun. <laughs> the community was calling for much needed updates to a seemingly unfinished game since its release. And while the game was still receiving consistent updates in 2020, many felt the updates were features that should have been in the game at launch. On the flip side, some fans thought the updates that were occurring in 2020 were perfectly fine, as they were mostly seasonal and holiday updates to a game that is intended to be played in real time. I think a lot of the disdain towards Nintendo has been forgotten about since then, especially after the Animal Crossing New Horizons infamous 2.0 update. Even though it didn't happen until a whole year later, November 4th, 2021, it expanded on so much and gave fans a truckload of content and a DLC. And I think that has satiated people for a while. It's not the most active game anymore. I don't think it ever will reach that peak of when it came out right when the pandemic pandemic started, but I do consider the game to be loads better and way more complete than it was at that time. The game is not set to receive any more new free content as announced by Nintendo, and trust me, I believe them. You should too, to maintain your peace. Long gone are the days of Star Fragment Trees. I haven't seen them pop up again since. However, my friend Wilbo's World did supply me with some B-roll for this video, and he was able to get the Star Trees to pop up in his game with a single player mod, but when other people go and visit his island, nobody else can see them. So I think it's safe to say, 
that star trees are gone forever. Rest in peace, star trees. Whether you love them or hated them, you have to admit they were beautiful, totally cool, super fun, and would have been a welcome addition legitimately as a legit item in the future. I guess I will leave you with these sentiments. Play Animal Crossing however the hell you want to, and don't be a fucking cop. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you everybody who helped me out on Instagram, Twitter, gathering research for this video. Could not do it without you guys. I would like to remind you that I do not want anybody to go and harass the people involved in this video, in this controversy. Not cool, please do not do that. Do not send hate towards anybody in this video. That is really fucking lame. My other socials are down below. If you wanna come and hang out, feel free to subscribe, of course, to this channel. I also stream on Twitch, a ton of different stuff. Animal Crossing Sims, Stardew Valley, yada yada yada. I'm obsessed with Fall Guys right now. I can't stop falling. But I hope you're having a great day and you continue to do so. And I will see you in the next one.